I are uh, co-presenting uh, on this one. Melanie and I are both uh, in the ARDC office in Canberra. So we're going to be covering today um, what is Research Data in Australia. Um, hoping most of you are aware, but um, just like to cover that off as well. How to find data there, um, how you can add metadata records to our Research Data Australia, uh, a little bit about um, writing good metadata descriptions and why you might want to do this. So uh, Research Data Australia was, uh, has been around for some time, it was launched in 2009 and it's a discovery portal for finding data um, and I've put and services there. The search is mostly focused around data, but um, for context, we also provide information and links to the services that might uh, provide or be connected to that data as well. Um, it's a multidisciplinary search portal. So um, the metadata that we collect and the searches that you can do um, really reflect that multidisciplinary nature of um, the data and the metadata um, and provide um, some, you know, what it, uh, I was going to say generic or common uh, ways to search for that data so it's not specific to a, a particular discipline. So it's, it's broad but not as deep as you might get um, in doing uh, searching in a discipline specific discovery portal. Um, it's metadata only, so that means we don't um, store, host, uh, and make available the data from our portal. We harvest and make available for searching metadata descriptions or descriptions of the data only. And we currently have, and counting, about 177,000 data sets represented, and they're from uh, over 100 Australian contributors. So the focus is uh, on Australian content and Australian contributors. And as I said, um, the metadata is critical uh, that's provided to Research Data Australia for providing meaning and context for all the data, um, allowing for its evaluation and reuse. So just taking, um, I think I've skipped a slide there. Nope. Um, a look at, um, yeah, I have some help, should be another one. Okay, let me just start this again, sorry. Okay. Is that sharing? Yep. I'm not sure why I've lost a slide. Um, I will just talk to this one. Um, no, not that sharing. Sorry, <laughs> present. Um, I had a, a slide about searching, so I'll just talk um, while we're on this slide. So in Research Data Australia, you can see right there, there's um, we have like a, a keyword sort of ser search box. So you can throw in any words and find data across all those disciplines. You can also browse by the subjects groupings that we have um, for search results in a particular subject area. We also have um, an advanced search option and that allows you to more finely refine and filter by things like uh, temporal or spatial characteristics of the data or the subject or um, or perhaps the license type or the access type. Um, so um, that's available there as an advanced search option and we've got a map uh, search for location-based searching. You can, uh, while this search is focused on the data and uh, you can switch in a, the advanced search option to search for services um, connected with that data and make the focus on services in, in particular. So if you wanted to search over the services we have registered with metadata in Research Data Australia, you can do that in our advanced search. So having done a search, um, you'll find a, a, a view like this. So we call it our collection record. Um, it's 
This is uh, generated from the metadata in Research Data Australia. And um, it's I'm showing you a small snapshot here, but it contains things like a description, a description of the license and the rights over that data set. There's, I've got highlighted, there's a button to access the data if that is being made available by download or by URL, or um, it might allow you to contact someone um, and provide an email address. Uh, there's a button called Cite, and that um, pops up a citation which you can copy and paste to that data asset, uh, data collection. And we provide an indication. Um, uh, as I said, of the license uh, where that's been stated and the uh, access. Um, so whether you can get, whether there are any, any uh, barriers to accessing that data, if it's restricted in any way, um, if, if the provider has given us an indication that it will be displayed there. Um, we also have information on temporal and any sp temporal or spatial characteristics of the data that can be um, specified there. Uh, I've highlighted um, that we provide some statistics on how many views and accesses of um, the access the data button um, have been registered and they are displayed on the record. Another uh, feature you see on um, on the side panel there, similar data sets you may be interested in. So um, we have a little algorithm sitting behind there that um, pulls up um, across a few features, um, things that are similar to the record you're currently looking at. And we see this as leveraging one of the benefits of Research Data Australia being a multidisciplinary portal um, with, you know, with a lot of clustering around particular subject areas and a lot of faceting around temporal and spatial things, as I, I said. So um, it's a way to surface similar things that perhaps from different disciplines that you might not have thought of going looking for. Um, slide. So further down in uh, that same record view, I've expanded it here. Um, we have a sort of graph type view, network graph type view of the collection and its links to various other collections indicated by the folder symbol or to um, the services uh, that might be connected to that collection that might be made available through a particular service. There'll be a connection indicated there or there might have been a research activity that generated that collection. So Research Data Australia um, leverages the metadata, the richness of the metadata, where there are connections described between a data set and other activities, services, or people, or organizations. So um, on the left side of my screen, you can see uh, that textually listed, so as related data and related organizations, related grants and projects and related services, and then it's pictorially represented as a network graph type of view, which is clickable and you can play with that in Research Data Australia and you can navigate to those other connected entities um, from that central collection. So it's a way um, to really visualize that and the relationships between those things. Okay, uh, I wanted to highlight, we also, um, okay, I managed to, this is the page I was looking for before. So um, just stepping back, um, this is our um, search and uh, showing you how you can use the advanced search here. Um, you get a screen with a lot more options to filter by or specify um, a subject or the provider or an access method or a license. Um, and then, uh, you get a search result based on that um, and you get additional filtering options in your search. Um, that advanced search, as I said, there's another button at the bottom that you can switch to focus your search on services instead of the data itself. So were you to um, search for a service record or navigate to um, a service record from a collection, which is also possible, um, you get to a record that looks something like this in Research Data Australia. This is LVO, the Virtual Lab for Human Communication Science. Um, and we can see um, some people who are uh, associated with that service and who the Western Sydney University as the data provider for this record. Um, there's a link provided to access the service. 
and um, some information about uh, licensing and a contact for that service. Sorry, can't scroll down. Um, and at the bot, and what we'll see on the next screen is um, again, you'll get at the bottom of that record, you'll get all the links to other entities within Research Data Australia that are linked to this service record. So you're seeing the service record in the centre of this network graph and all the relationships it has with the other entities in Research Data Australia. So uh, here we're looking, you know, there's a handful of collections, we've got some people and organisations um, and some links to web URLs as well. Um, and they, you can see that listed as in the text form um, opposite as well. So it's very richly connected. Um, you can navigate using this network diagram to those other entities. Um, now for those interested, well, I hope you all are, um, in providing records to Research Data Australia and contributing good metadata content to you know, produce those lovely search results and records that we just saw, um, we publish what we call our Research Data Australia Content Providers Guide. Don't, you don't need to know too much about this at the moment, just that we have one and it's got very detailed um, description of how you can um, encode metadata records for Research Data Australia using um, best practice, what, what would be the best thing to do in each context um, for a good result for discovery in Research Data Australia. So it's a non-technical guide um, and it describes a lot of our best practice for discovery. Um, we use, um, so getting technical, you, you don't need to know too much of the details, but we use a metadata schema called RIFCS, which is the Registry Interchange Format Collections and Services XML schema. And we, that allows us to share metadata between your source repository and our Research Data Australia registry. And it's um, an object oriented relational model. That's how we're able to generate those um, networks and connections and relationships between objects um, that describes not only data, but the researchers and research activities and services that surround and are linked to that data. So um, just to give you a taste of the sort of guidance that we provide in that guide, it's in much more detail, but what we're looking for when we talk about what makes a good um, data description or a collection metadata record is um, we'd be looking for having a persistent ID, uh, identifier like a DOI on that data set and having that in the metadata. The metadata provides access to or information on how to ex access the data being described. And there is citation information. I showed you how that um, displays in a record. So that um, allows people to know how to cite your data set when they reuse it. And a license will tell you, tell people wanting to reuse the data how they, if and how they may reuse that data. The um, identifiers allow you to connect to related outputs such as publications and software, people and projects, and that all helps with discovery and from navigating to additional entities to give context to that data record. And as I said, it can, uh, data, metadata record can be connected to services and their own service description um, that could be used to support, access, manipulate that data. Um, a description obviously of how the data were created and how to interpret that, which will enable anyone looking um, in Research Data Australia to make a determination of, where, of the value of that data and where the potential for its reuse. Subject information is uh, really, really important for discovery. As you, so a big feature in our portal is being able to browse by subjects or being to search or cluster around a particular subject. So that really helps um, cut across a lot of the deep content that we have in there. And spatial and temporal coverage, um, which positions the data in space and time, if it's relevant to that data set, also very useful um, in the context of discovery. And similarly for a service record, um, what I might pull out here, so you'd have access information such as the URL for that service. Rights, again, very important, who may access that service and under what conditions is it being made available? Um, a description for potential users 
including version configuration or implementation information. Um, a, a persistent identifier, um, a handle can be used as a persistent identifier. And we had a presentation um, last week on identifiers, um, including DOIs and handles. So we have a handle service. If you need to know more about that, get in, you can find out, get in touch or view the previous presentation on identifiers. Um, protocol information can be included as related information in the service record. Again, subject terms are useful. And uh, we only register services where they're connected to data sets or data collections in Research Data Australia because that is our focus for discovery. So um, we'll only register a description of that service um, connected to a collection and those collections are acted on or through that service. Um, and also provide any related information you have about the service. So it can go to a publication or a URL that provides more information. And I'm going to hand over at this point to Melanie um, to finish off the presentation. Thanks, Thank Melanie. You. Thank you, Catherine. So further guidance for depicting this relationship between the data set and the services is also available. And this guidance was- You've just formed... frozen, Melanie. Oh. Uh oh, um, how's my voice? Is my voice okay if I just- I can, I can hear you, Melanie. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'll- um, Yep, I think we can hear you okay. Oh, good. Okay, I'll just keep that camera off and talk. Okay, so um, in case you didn't hear that, so we have further guidance for depicting this relationship between the data sets and the services. And this guidance was what we formed following the consultation within our data services interest group, 2017 and 18. So this interest group, we agreed on some end user scenarios that we wanted to support. And in response, we identified shared practice for exposing this information about data and related services across organizations. So in that table on the right, it's a little bit small there, but if you follow that link later, um, this is the resultant core information set for data and related services, which can be included within data set metadata and within the related service metadata. So providing this information is what will enable those network diagrams that Catherine showed and talked about, uh, showing relationships between data and services, for example. So our next slide, please. Am I still in this? Does anyone hear me or am I bumped? I can still hear you, Melanie. Oh, I, can, I can hear you. I don't know who's um, meant to be moving the slides forward. Though, I, but... I wonder if we've lost Catherine in fact. Oh, oh no, she's back. Catherine looks back. Hey, Catherine. <laughs> I was just ready for that uh, next slide, number 13. We've lost your, you're muted, I think, Catherine. Yes, I'm muted, sorry. Um, that was my connection dropped out. Just sharing again. My Thank you. Goes. Thank you. This is a demonstration of resilience today. <laughs> Fine slides. Uh -huh. Were you on the next one, Melanie? Yeah, number 13, please. Okay, come Thank in. you. Thanks for sharing for me. Present. <laughs> Great, okay, so the links included within this slide will take you to the contributor page in RDA and the box on the right is from that contributor page listing the organizations who already contribute metadata. If your organization is in the list, then ARDC can put you in contact with the people within your organization who manage the relevant metadata. So to assist you with constructing and amending metadata for your data and other items. And then ARDC can assist you or your organization with the corresponding metadata representation within RDA. If your organization is not yet within the list, then ARDC can assist your organization to establish a metadata harvest to RDA. Next, please. So as you can see here, the RDA Harvester accepts multiple metadata schemas and profiles from contributors in either XML or JSON format. 
we reuse the mappings from the various input schemas and profiles to RIFCS yes, where they exist. Otherwise, we construct new mappings. We have, for example, been able to reuse mapping from Figshare RDF XML to RIFCS XML for multiple universities. And this allows every subsequent update to easily propagate to each provider. And then over on the right, you can see metadata from the RDA registries consumed by various external systems. For example, the representation of RIFCS in schema.org allows the data to be discovered via Google dataset search. Next, please. So as well as uh, accepting multiple types of metadata schemas and profiles, the RDA Harvester accepts multiple types of harvest endpoints. We've listed a few here in the middle that you may be familiar with. So we have the Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting, uh, which has been a low barrier mechanism for repository interoperability. We've also got the Open Geospatial Consortium Standard Catalog Service for the web, which is, for example, implemented within the open source GeoNetwork metadata data catalog um, and there's also just a simple HTTP get for even a simple web server and just a few records. Uh, the CCAN API provides metadata in JSON format so we've got a crosswalk from its default metadata schema and um, harvest endpoint types that are not yet supported can be raised with ARDCs so to explore harvesting from them. Next. So metadata is crucial for providing information that enables discovery, access, interoperability and reuse of data, services, instruments, etc. This assists research outcomes and impact while enhancing the potential for collaboration. Uh, as we've shown, metadata can indicate links to other research assets. So for example, that a particular data set is available via a service of a particular protocol. Uh, we can include links to people, organizations, publications, grants, etc. And the metadata can encourage attribution of the data and the appropriate use according to license. Uh, registering your metadata in publicly accessible catalogs, then harvested by RDA, further enhances these outcomes. And then, as we've shown, there are benefits within RDA itself. So the further syndication and that itself gathers and provides statistics, including how often a record is viewed or accessed. Next. So ARDC can help. Um, you are very welcome to contact your ARDC liaison with any queries that you have, and your liaison will help you to contact the right people within your organization according to whatever stage that you are at. And um, we will assist your organization with metadata feeds to RDA. We can assist with manual entry um, of metadata records too, and we can assist with the metadata content. Next, we have a little summary of resources pertaining to the content that we've covered today. And be in touch with us if you can't find what you're looking for or if you have any other questions.